Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View, Ladies T. Tonight we are joined by the host of The Reaction with Chrissy Clark, Chrissy Clark, and writer for The Daily Caller, Kay Smythe, Chrissy and Kay. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Kay, first time having you. Excited to get your thoughts on all the things, and there are a lot of things. I think the first item of business that I everyone kind of talks about. I feel like you go out to dinner, everyone inevitably ends up talking about politics. That's just the nature of the beast these days. And then everybody kind of comes to a point where they're like, do you really think Joe Biden will be the nominee for the Democrats? And I got to tell you something, Kay, you ask me that question. My question, my, that, that answer to that question for me for a long time has been no. I do not believe that Joe Biden I'm shocked he announced he was running. I thought that that wouldn't happen, so maybe they got me there. Do you see any way that the Democrats are legitimately going to run Joe Biden, or do you think there will be like a last-minute switch? What do you foresee happening here? Because there are a lot of other folks, RFK Jr., Marianne Williamson, uh, Dean Phillips from Minnesota, who, who says he might try to primary old Joe. What do you think is going to happen with Joe Biden? Love to get your thoughts. Yeah, it's this Dean guy from Minnesota who's kind of freaked me out because I was in sort of the same boat as you. I really wasn't, you know, I was like, okay, the aliens are going to invade or yeah, something's going to happen. Pretty much. There's not going to be another election. We should just move on with our lives. Um, and it certainly won't be Joe Biden, but I also think that most of the Democrats in D.C. vastly underestimate the intelligence of Americans. So I think they're stupid enough to think that people would actually go for another four years of Biden. Maybe. So I was kind of like, you know, it's a win-win situation. Either we get like something crazy happening and I'm all for chaos um, in the right way, as long as everyone's safe and healthy um, and not rioting in the streets for no reason. Um, or, you know, we get them to put him up for nomination and it's just, you know, just everything goes straight to the GOP. And then this Dean guy came into the picture and I'm like, oh, are they going to try and pull some weird dark horse thing? Now that RFK has gotten so much attention, people mm -hmm. love him. There should be really a primary. There really has to be since he's in the picture. I don't even want to talk about Marianne Williams and like, I can't take her seriously as a human being, <laughs> let alone as president. Like, come on, babe. She's letting the side down. Is but it the crystals now, that did it for you with her? Like, I'm all for the crystal thing, but like, you Me too. don't talk about that publicly. Like, that is a private <laughs> thing that we all get like embarrassed about and talk about with the girls, but we don't do that on television. So, you know, um, but no, Bless then this Dean guy kind of came out of nowhere and I was like, oh, they're going to put this guy in. He's going to be seen as someone who's more realistic than RFK, considering how like far the left go and all the vaccine stuff, because they actually hate science. Um, and yes, I think this Dean guy could be the one that comes in and then Biden says, I like this guy. It's going to be him. We're all like, who even is he? And then all of a sudden he's our president for the next eight years. Well, yeah. And so that's I, my fear. I feel like, um, Chrissy, they, th some people really are talking about Dean Phillips because he flipped in 2018, a Republican district in Minnesota to Democrat. He's a Democrat, right? So he won this district and he's been reelected twice since. And so I guess in some ways, somebody within the Democrat Party, I mean, my gosh, what a, a, a low bar has been set and no bench at all on the, the Democrat side. I mean, who is the obvious second choice if it's not Joe Biden? It would always be, say, your vice president. We know that's not gonna, gonna happen. Kamala is so unpopular. I mean, don't forget she dropped out before they even voted in her home state of California during the presidential primaries back in 2020 because she was so unpopular then. It's gone the wrong way for her. She's gotten even worse. Then you've got you know people like RFK who they'll, they'll never let this guy get in because he, he probably spits a little too much truth for the Democrats, so to speak. Marianne Williamson, love her. God bless the crystals. Probably not her. So then you got this guy that maybe they just kind of throw in there. I don't know. I, I feel like they're getting a little bit desperate. But do you think that Joe Biden is making it to the debate stage versus who will probably be my father-in-law as the Republican nominee. Is he actually the one they're going to run on the Democrat side? 
I know it's just a terrible take, but yes, I do think that Joe Biden will inevitably be our next nominee. And the reason I say that is because I don't think it's Joe Biden necessarily running. I think there's a shadow campaign behind Joe Biden that obviously is pushing for this. And the only reason I'm very staunch in this belief is because Gavin Newsom to me is you know, you're equivalent to the Ron DeSantis on the GOP side. If he were to jump in, he thought he even had a shot in it. He would do so, but he was probably acknowledged behind the scenes by the DNC saying, sit out, you're not doing this, we're not having your back. The RNC operates very differently, especially given that, like you said, Trump is a former president, but wasn't the previous former president. So there was a lot of different workings there with the RNC could and couldn't do. It's a very weird situation to be in. And the DNC is probably behind the scenes telling Gavin Newsom, no, and anybody that's going out there, I'm going to assume is not doing it on behalf of the DNC. And I'm going to assume is going to be continually, continually shot down, just like RFK was, and just like Ministry of Love creator, Marianne Williamson. <laughs> Ministry of love. I mean, it's it's all very interesting. Joe Biden, I don't know if anybody saw it um, last week, I think on Friday, flew all the way to Maine to sign some executive order in Auburn, Maine, and got there, got on stage, did a little song and dance for the people on stage, if you want to call it that, from Joe Biden, forgot to even sign the executive order. They had to, like, turn him back around and be like, Joe, you didn't even do what you came here to do. And then it's, <laughs> oh. And then I saw this Babylon B post, and it actually perfectly framed for me what I feel obviously happened in the Biden family. Family torn between placing grandpa in hospice or having him run for Senate. I mean, <laughs> what? I mean, you got to laugh at it because you're like, oh, that's what's going on. In the White House right now, Kay. I mean, it's so it's so gross. Um, but just to piggyback for a moment, Kay, on what you were talking about, this is a, a, a an entire party, the Democrats, who deny science. We know they don't believe in it because all you have to do is go back and look at COVID, all the measures they put in place that were just pointless and worthless altogether. And we all knew that in the moment. Um, I had an experience today that was very interesting. My husband and I did a little cleaning last night we got some of our kids' toys that they've outgrown. These are like little like plastic push cars and things from when they were like really babies and, and like toddlers who just started learning to walk. They've outgrown them now. They're on their bikes now. It's a different era in our house. And so we clean all this stuff out and we were like, oh, we'll go take it and donate it to the Goodwill. There's a Goodwill like 10 minutes from our house. Well, guess what happened when... We showed up at the Goodwill with an entire trunk full, I mean, like the back of a big SUV filled with this stuff. They told us, I'm in the state of New York right now, unfortunately, that they couldn't take it because of COVID measures. First of all, you're kidding. We're, we're still doing COVID measures right now. What what are we talking about? What COVID measures? What is an issue? What is going on here? And then you're telling me that a hard plastic car you cannot take for a kid that might not have anything. These are things that are in great condition. We took really good care of them. And I would love for some other child to be able to utilize these things. They said they couldn't take any of it, Kay. Here we are. I thought that maybe New York was turning a corner. Maybe we're going to make some sense here. I mean, I feel like we live in a communist state and everybody is crazy here in New York. I don't know what this is. I mean, okay, this is this is me going out on a limb. This is this is where the chaos in my brain comes in. Oh, okay. good. So, Love it. this is a this is a weird one. I'm putting this together and I'm basing it on just sort of research that I've done through my writing at the Daily Caller and a handful of other things. New York has as a state, an ongoing problem with, uh, let's call it water treatment, because I don't want to be gross. Um, they have water treatment issues, and as a result, there's a lot of diseases that we wouldn't have worried about sort of like oh. 10, 15 years ago, probably even like five years ago, that are starting to reemerge. And it's not just happening in New York, it's happening in Los Angeles, it's happening in a lot of uh, <clears throat> Democrat run states and cities. Mm. Um, wow. So a lot of these diseases are coming back. And right when COVID was kind of falling apart as a narrative, uh, I found a piece of legislation that was up for consideration in New York at the time that if passed would have handed the state the kind of powers that existed like under Stalin. 
Oh, I mean, God. just the craziest, insane amount of control. You've been exposed to something. We're going to take you out of your home. We're not going to prove what? to you that we think you've been exposed to something, but we're going to remove you and we're going to hold you. And the way that the legislation was written basically said indefinitely. And wow. something like that, you only need in like, well, you don't need it in any circumstance. But I'm from Europe and I still have that weird socialist indoctrination in the very back of my head, like every now and again that comes out, but I fight against it daily. Um, but you only need something like that if there's like an Ebola epidemic yeah. or something crazy like that. So the fact that New York hasn't lifted a lot of these so-called like COVID measures Maybe they're trying to mitigate the spread of the diseases that are coming from their absolute lack of management of the Ugh. state at, an, as, at a baseline level. Things like clean water, clean air, you know, safe drinking water, you know, the filth that's in the streets, the lawlessness that has caused sort of like the criminal crisis, that sort of filth that we now see everywhere in these cities. That gets into stuff. Like that gets into everything. You can't really avoid it. And so, yeah, maybe there's some weird legislation in there that's trying to actually stop the spread of this stuff and it just hasn't reached the mainstream news media yet. Like I, I don't even want to go into the grossness that I've read about like New York City under Democrat well, leadership in the last I, five years. Well, let me tell you what happened to me really quickly. So last year I did the New York City Triathlon and we had basically like the two days leading up to this race. It's it's literally there in New York. You start on um, uh, like you swim in the Hudson River and then you run through Central Park and then you bike along like the Henry Hudson Parkway, uh, you know, West Side Highway. OK, just to set it up for everybody. We had rain like a lot of rain in the days leading up to this race last year and because we were swimming in the hudson we started getting emails like 24 hours 40 hours out from the race that was like hey because we've had so much rainfall all of the sewers in new york overflow into the hudson river and because of that we're not sure if it's going to be safe enough to swim in but we'll keep you updated and of course no. immediately i get an email i'm like i'm sorry you think now i want to swim in this at all if it's safe so what ended up happening is that um the the water level was still too dangerous in terms of like the all of the disease and i, I guess probably fecal matter etc that Chrissy was in the Hudson River. So thank God, I guess, probably for my own safety, they canceled the swim that year. So we did like a run, bike, run, a run, bike, run. Yeah. And so anyway, my whole point is, okay, I don't, I'm not going to discount for a second everything you're saying. I think it sounds very accurate based on my New York City triathlon experience <laughs> from last year. That is horrifying. Um, Something else I think that is is horrifying, Chrissy. If you want to weigh in on the the sewers in New York, have at it. Otherwise, I think we got to get really quickly to China. Talk about yeah. you know communist tactics and all this crazy stuff that's going on. I think we all know how China has. I mean, their goal is obvious. Their goal is to usurp mm -hmm. America as the world superpower. We all can kind of get that now, or anybody who's paid any sort of attention is understanding that now. One of the ways they do that is they put. Anybody who, who leaves China and then comes to America and wants to be a U.S. citizen, you've heard about these like Chinese police stations. These are these are ways that they kind of control people. They, they make sure people don't talk about the CCP after they leave China. There's no bad mouthing anybody from China. You just keep your mouth shut and you focus. And by the way, maybe we need you to do a little spying for China. And if you don't, oh, your sister back in China, well, maybe she's not going to get into college. There's a lot of like crazy stuff that goes on there, right? We know what their goals are. Well, the latest information to come out is that China, that's right, the Chinese Communist Party is funding some of America's public schools. It has channeled somewhere in the neighborhood of $17 million into more than 143 kindergarten through 12th grade school districts. And uh, Chrissy, I got to tell you, Th that that could be one of the most terrifying things if the, if the Chinese somehow can infiltrate our school system and our you know talk about propaganda and indoctrination we already know what happens at a lot of these schools with all the woke ideology that could be a pretty dangerous thing could it not 
Yeah, well, when you're stopping uh, senators in California and represent- oh. representatives, it's pretty easy to infiltrate <laughs> our government and our public schools. <laughs> I definitely think that this is an indictment that won Congress for failing to act. And I, I would assume it's, it's also an indictment on our public universities for just failing to act and stand up to these Chinese communist centers that exist on college campuses as is. The Chinese government wouldn't be funneling million, 17 million, million dollars to public schools in America if they didn't think that their programs on college campuses were incredibly successful. For those of you who don't know, it's basically they have these they have these influence peddling centers on college campuses across the nation. And they kind of bill it to kids as this idea of like, of like learn about our culture, but it's also learn about our ideology and why our ideology is better than yours. And then come on, join our party. It's exactly um, what is grabbing the minds of so many young people right now, now specific colleges and people wonder, oh, why is Gen Z so woke? Uh, because of this, it's part and parcel. And so I think it's really, it's an indictment on the people that are supposed to be running, running these, that are supposed to be looking out for our college kids, that they're not doing that. So why wouldn't they continue to infiltrate? They infiltrate successfully on TikTok. We haven't done anything to stop oh. them. They infiltrate successfully in public schools now. They'll they'll continue this until somebody grows a backbone, and unfortunately, that's never going to happen when we have an administration that is run by anybody with a D, parentheses, around their name. Yeah, no, it's so true. Um, it also, uh, this article that I read about a case states that the CCP has ties to school districts near 20 U.S. military bases and three of the nation's top science and technology high schools have been infiltrated. I mean, uh, look, if if you want to take down the superpower of the world, the United States of America, not only would you maybe try and promote all the chaos, talk about chaos, which you've used <laughs> several times now, and, you know, and I'm here for a certain amount of chaos, but you would try to promote things like any sort of racial situation, like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it pr promoting transgender issues because, you know, it's a hot button topic for people. So people aren't really paying attention to what the Chinese are doing. You've got enough going on here at home that you're, you know, over here. And then the Chinese are swooping in. They're teaching their kids. They got everything in line over there. They're building up their military. They're building up their money. Um, and now apparently they're infiltrating our schools and it just so happens these are by major U S military bases. I mean, this could be really scary stuff. We got to keep an eye out for this stuff. Somebody needs to, to really figure this out. There is a probe into it though. I'm happy to say. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, I would love to see a probe into the fentanyl crisis, which is yes. being propped up by China. I think, you know, Chrissy really nailed it talking like, well, you both really nailed it, like talking about the infiltration of the education system, with, like TikTok. TikTok oh. is one of the most horrifying, like, versions of this stealth invasion I have seen. I mean, it's just everything is not targeted directly at us. It's targeted at our children when you think about it. Because when you're most likely to experiment with drugs, when you're a young person or, yeah, like a teenager, that's just, that's just how it is statistically. When are you most likely to get hooked on social media? When you're a child, when you're a teenager. You know, the education stuff has been going on for a long time with China. They are incredibly good at educating mm -hmm. their masses and they're incredibly good at dumbing down the rest of the world. And I think that the more that this continues, the less, I the way I see it is the world just has to worry less and less and less about America. And it's this sort of perfect storm where there's, there is bloodshed. People are like hundreds of thousands of people are dying every single year from the fentanyl crisis, from the mental right. health crisis that's been spurred on by TikTok. All of these can, all of these things can be traced back to China, but it's really hard to do it in such a way that America can sort of take action without being seen as being too extreme. Personally, I disagree with that, but I understand that on a macro level that that can't happen. And I don't really know what happens next, but I think it has to come in the form of much tougher leadership and people who will stand up to China and not just keep taking their money and bowing down. Like I've been saying for ages that we're just going to sit there while Taiwan slowly disappears, exactly like Hong Kong did. I was there. 
I was in Hong Kong when oh, China wow. said, you know what, you've had enough time. We want you back now. It started years before the mainstream news media talk about it. And it's just so insidious. And it it really defines China, like the CCP at this point. And uh, I don't know. I just think that we've got a lot of tough men and women here and we can fight back using the same tools, but a lot of them aren't in power yet. We, we do have, look, we have all the ability in the world and it's, it's going to have to start with people actually being willing to talk about it, call it out and really stand yeah. firm. I mean, look, there's, there's a reason why when Donald Trump was president, you know, things felt a lot different as it related to China. We had two different trade agreements with China. Like when, when did you see anything like that happening previously? Look at the leadership now, if we can even call it that. I mean, Joe Biden, we know, has gotten millions of dollars via his family from China. What has been going on there? Why isn't that Joe Biden will even ask Xi Jinping whenever he talks to him about the origins of COVID? Something we still don't have any answers to. And we still really, like, God forbid we ever find ourselves in another situation like this. I guess we're just going to use the same playbook, which obviously wasn't good. Um, it's just very concerning, I think. I think you're right. We need new, tough leadership in order to at least put the brakes on all this that's happening. Um, one of the things that I think is happening, very concerning as a parent, is, of course, I just mentioned it, all the transgender the stuff going on and look, I'm all for whatever you feel like doing as an adult, please go ahead and do it. I want a happy society as long as it doesn't harm anyone else, but kids are a different story. And I'll tell you what, my kids changed their mind. My daughter's got a birthday coming up and the number of times she's changed her mind about what kind of birthday party she wants to have. First, it was an Elsa birthday party. Then it was a puppy birthday party. Then it was balloons. Then it was ice cream. I'm like, we got to narrow this down. So the idea that any of these kids are going to come home and be like, hey, you know what? I feel like I'm in the wrong body. And obviously, some parents are like, let's start the transition today. But it's awful for these kids. We know these kids don't have the capacity to make these kinds of decisions, Chrissy. Um, there was a congressional hearing and a mom was talking to Congress saying how she knew that her child was trans. This is a girl who considered herself then a boy because her child, and she referred to her child who is a biological girl as he, he refused to wear anything pink or girly. We thought he was a tomboy. He was the only girl on the football team. Um, I, I got to tell you, that's, that's not enough for me. My kids refuse to wear stuff all the time. Right now, speaking of my daughter, the only thing she will wear, long sleeve dresses. It was like 96 degrees in New York the other day, long sleeve dress. Doesn't, I mean, like we can't really utilize that as the basis for transitioning a child, can we? Absolutely not. And Laura, I'm actually, I'm actually going to pivot a little bit to explain how this transgenderism is. It, it is a rapid onset gender dysphoria. Like it's an intense mental health problem, but it's not just manifesting in this transgenderism anymore. We're seeing it manifest in so many other places right now. And the newest, newest one, 15 year old girls putting on YouTube videos that have lo-fi music and pictures of Korean women. And they fall asleep to this and they claim that over a period of time, they can change their genetic DNA to be Korean women and they will wake up with thinner eyes and darker hair. This is a legitimate story yeah. out of NBC, okay? This is a thing that girls are doing now. It is clearly a mental health crisis among our young women, the fact that they are identifying as transgender. It is a mental health crisis that this mother is undergoing perceiving that her biological male male child or biological female child, I should say, sorry, is somehow a man. It doesn't add up, but I think it writ large goes almost to what Kay was saying about TikTok and the way that there's a mental health crisis that we just simply don't talk enough about solutions about. And I'm, I'm not saying I got the solution. I'm just saying we have to talk about solutions at some point because this is a problem that's manifesting, sure, in transgenderism, but we're going to see it in transracialism. I've seen it with girls getting tattooed freckles on their faces. Like oh, It gosh. is just going beyond compare of just mental health crises coupled with unrealistic beauty standards. I mean, it's, it's really, the, the thing is, it would be one thing, Kay, if this was like, oh, it's, you know, they'll grow out of it. It's a fad. It's whatever. The, the moves that are being made 
with some kids are irreversible. Some of the, the, you know, hormone blockers they take, surgeries. Um, at this same hearing, Chloe Cole, who is now detransitioned, she transitioned at one time from a, she was a biological female, transitioned to male, and now has transitioned back. Uh, I believe she had her breasts cut off when she was 15 years old. She said that this mother actually reminded her of her own parents. And she says her parents were given the false dichotomy of either child transitions or she dies. But she said the transition almost killed me. And I think Chrissy's right. Look, we, we need to come up with better solutions than just like, let's give them some hormones or block the hormones or a surgery or something like that. Cause these things are irreversible. And it's not just that they're, it's male, female. We know about these kids identifying as furries, as dogs and cats and all this crazy stuff. I mean, where, where are the parents that are standing up and are like, you're not a dog. You're not a cat. Like, I don't know what to make of this. And I get it. Nothing's easy. You want to do what's best for your kid. But certainly these people can't think what's best for their kid is an irreversible surgery. Okay. So I've got to ask the question. Have either of you ever met one of these parents who believes all of this stuff in real life? I actually have. Okay, have, okay, good. Because I've yeah. only met one. And so I was like, oh, I don't have a lot of like firsthand experience with this. And it was it was great. It was a bachelorette party. And we'd managed to get through the entire weekend without talking too much about politics. And then as we're about to walk out the door, this woman sort of brings up, uh, you know, oh, I just think like we're all being too mean to kids while they're already going through something different. And it was like just every woman in that room inspired me at that moment because they turned around and said what are you talking about were you born in a barn I'm embarrassed for you get that out of your head now and just ripped her a new one and it was magical and I loved it um but when it comes you know when it comes to all of this stuff I I tend to turn to Chrissy you know she's really the authority on this like you know the documentaries that she's made with the Daily Caller uh like groomed I mean it's I don't know how you how you know so much about this, Chrissy, and still have your mental health so intact and is still <laughs> such a wonderful, glowing human being. Um, but, like, throughout all of the interviews that you've done, I mean, have you spoken to any of these parents? Because, like, again, I, everyone I know, I live in North Carolina, so I'm surrounded by, like, a lot of not woke people, which is magical. Oh, I love um, but that. all the parents I know are just like, there's no way we would allow that to happen. Sorry, cat's trying to now come up. Um, but yeah, oh, yeah, get the cat, get the cat involved. Yeah. Chrissy, I'm, I'm curious too. What, what, what happens? I've had one experience. This is ages ago. This is before this even became a thing. Like all these kids c- claiming that they're transgender back when I worked for inside edition, which God seven, eight years ago. Now I actually mm-hmm. spent like a day with jazz Jennings and her Ooh. mom yeah, and this was, I mean, they're, I think they were doing like a TLC show or something at the time, and so this was them like promoting it. So we went, like I followed the mom and and jazz shopping for, of course, like female clothes. And at the time, I didn't really like think much of it because I was like, well, this is a little odd, but I mean, maybe this, the, this, obviously this kid had a problem and this is how the parents are dealing with it. And it didn't seem that bad. But now in retrospect, I'm like, oh my God, like I was there very early on, and I didn't really understand the gravity of of what had happened to this kid and then how it would kind of end up to where we are today. Um, but yeah, Chrissy, I don't know. What's your experience been? Well, first off, Kay, K- you so much. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, we're, we're like very good, like close work friends, best work friends. So that's Love why it. we know so much about each other. Um, <laughs> but yes, through my documentaries at the Daily Caller, Damage Group, um, these are documentaries that really do highlight just the tragedy of what these parents go through and th- what these kids have gone through, including Chloe. And w- Groomed really talked about it through the lens of a mom. And this was a progressive Democratic mom who uncovered through her you know, trials and tribulations with her own daughter what a lie that transgender 
transgenderism genuinely is. And I think there is a delineation in parenting between those who underwent the transgender craze between 2018 and 2021 and those parents that have, have parent in this transgenderism AIDS post 2021. And I say that because between 2018 and 2021, there wasn't a public outcry about this because we hadn't gone through COVID yet. So parents weren't seeing this stuff being taught in the classroom, right? right? There was a total just blanket no one was talking about this was only a problem that lots of people were going through in the dark so people were listening to the guidance of doctors because we'd never had an epidemic or a pandemic that made us think oh i shouldn't listen to that doctor right so pre-2020 a lot of these people were listening to, do to doctors or were saying were saying well if you don't transition your kid your kid's gonna die they're gonna right. kill themselves so of course they're going and listening to their doctor but then post 2020 happened we all saw this people started talking about this openly as a matter of political discourse and then groups started popping up moms that are progressive democrats that don't believe that this should be a thing moms who are um, you know, in, in California that are maybe more Republican or conservative, but this is what their daughter and their doctor is telling them. And this is what their friend group is seeing. It is fascinating to see how parents are pushing back. My only one-on-one -on -one encounter with a parent that's had to go through this is somebody, a woman who is privately so torn up about the public transition, but again, would do anything for her son who is now a woman or identifies as a woman. So it really depends, but I think that it goes to show that will, parents will do literally anything to protect their children. I just wish they would lobby to protect their children against the doctors who are mutilating them. Yeah, it's no, good. Chrissy, I think, I think you're right. I think that there's so much emphasis on screens. We know it's always around us. I think it's hard mm -hmm. as parents all the time. All this stuff happened so rapidly that we have found ourselves in a space like this that yes, maybe we need some guidelines. Maybe we need to give parents information. Mm -hmm. Here's a good age. You start talking to your kid and here are the things you say to them. Stranger danger. We all know because we were all taught it time and time again. And it became like second nature to us as kids to be wary of strangers. Maybe I think you're right. You're onto something. We need to do a similar sort of thing here. Um, before we go, we got to really just uh, blow the do doors off for the ladies out there. Here's what I love about this show. We've got ladies on this show. Was that a cat? There's a yeah. cat. There's yeah. a cat. Amazing. Whoa. Kate, first of all, before we get to, to the lazy girl jobs from TikTok, which I mean, we got to talk about. Who's the cat? Please introduce us all. This is fantastic news. This is Wonky. Oh my he's gosh. He's a Siamese. Amaze. He's my sweet boy, but he's um he's not all there. Oh, you know? well, like, he's, he's not, not all there. But oh. he he gives us a lot of a lot of comedy. He's also the Kaiser Soze of the family. <laughs> Cuz he'll walk kind of wonky, hence the name. And oh. then when he needs something, all of a sudden, he's absolutely fine. Oh. But um yeah, I have I have a dog like that, Charlie. He's my 13 year old beagle, and oh. people will see him and they're like, "Oh, he's an old dog, huh?" And I'm like, "No, no, don't let him trick you." Because the second you get like a crusty hot dog out from like two weeks ago, that guy is beelining. I found him digging in my neighbor's garbage can last night, ripping the bag apart. I'm not even kidding. Like, yeah. So we got the same going on in our house. So shout out to oh all the dog God. dog parents out there. Love that. <laughs> Chrissy, your dog's outside the door, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm just so. really glad that you said that about your dog because my dog, we love to dog sit. We're really just, if I could have eight dogs, I would. I grew up with yeah. four. So we'll dog sit whenever somebody needs to just go out of town for a weekend. And anytime a dog that is too energetic for mine comes around, mine feigns a limp and will walk <gasps> around like on three legs. I'm like, you didn't have that okay. yesterday. And then the dog goes home and he's back on all fours. I'm like, you're so of it. Can I just tell you, maybe we just have re very smart animals. They're trying to play everybody. No, so I no, mean Mike like chases his own shadow. So let's oh. not give him too much credit. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to give him some kind of credit, but may maybe you're right. Um, no. so there's something, not that I frequent TikTok. In fact, I don't even have it on my phone because my father-in-law told all of us that the Chinese were probably spying on us via TikTok. So I never downloaded it. Now, by the way, I think we're finding out that is true. Um, Gen Z women, I like to, I like to say positive things about women. Every chance I get three of us women who are uh, out there hustling, we're trying to get things done. I like a woman in a, a high power job. I like a woman going for it. I like a woman who doesn't, doesn't utilize the fact that she's a woman to get a job a la our vice president. But 
<laughs> the Gen Z women on TikTok apparently have a new trend. The hashtag is hashtag lazy girl jobs. And there's this group of influencers who share their tips on earning decent pay. I don't know exactly what that means by doing the bare minimum. Um, I, I, these are work from home jobs and they're just basically all these women are using this hashtag now. K um, lazy girl jobs. I got to tell you, I don't want a lazy girl job. I want to earn it. I feel like we have a whole generation that feels like things are just owed to them, that they don't really have to work anyway. I'm not surprised, I guess, to see this sort of thing. But as a woman, like, I feel like we're better than that. We can get out there and hustle a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. And I mean, look, I go back and forth, you know. Sometimes I look at Gloria Steinem and what she did for the feminist movement and I think, oh, you're a domestic terrorist. You ruined everything for us in every single way possible. Can you imagine how much more chill my life would be if I got to like live on my little homestead and grow all my vegetables and just take care of a family? But here's the thing. I do do all of that stuff. Right. And I still have the career that I dreamed about when I was a young girl. It's... I. I it's the, America's the only place in the world I could do this. Dude, I'm trying to talk. I um, um, love, love it. But America really is the only place in the world that sort of offer, offers the opportunity to do anything you want. Like, I cannot stress this enough. I've been to most places. I've, I've got friends that live in most places. This is the only place that will afford you your dreams. Like, yep. it's, that, it's literally that simple. Take it from an immigrant. Like, it is that simple. But you have and to work for it. You've got to work for it. Yeah. I mean, did I get this? Oh, my God. Wonky, bro. Did I get this overnight? <laughs> Absolutely not. But I have this incredible life because this country affords you that. Here's what's going to happen to these lazy girls and their lazy jobs. Mm. When they probably hit like 35, 40, they'll realize that no guy has wanted to settle down with them because they're gross and they're lazy. When they hit sort of like the 45, 50 mark, they're going to feel like kind of trash. Like the way that they live is not going to be up to the same standards as the women that they grew up around. By the time they hit 60, you know what's going to happen? No one cares because they will be irrelevant and childless. And that's not me trying to shame women who don't want to have kids. Like yeah. I've got a lot of girlfriends who just don't want to have kids. I can't wait to have kids. That's my personal preference. So long as we're not killing unborn kids, I'm happy. But it just, it really saddens me that these girls think that their lives are going to be great or they're going to like, it j they're just setting themselves up for like a really sad life. Yeah. And well, it, I wish someone was saying that louder to them. Yeah. But what's their long-term plan? This is my question, Chrissy. Like for me, there was always a goal that I had set for myself and something I was striving towards and, and working hard to achieve. And if you don't have goals and you don't have achievements or bigger things that you are trying to pursue, then what ultimately happens to you? I mean, like you can only get by on your looks, which a lot of these girls are very cute. Truth be told for so long. And like, do you really just want to barely get by you? You make quote unquote, decent pay as they say, and just kind of skirt by. Is that really like, that's it for you? Yeah, I think it's twofold. And I think it's a lot sadder than we might initially think when you see something as frivolous, frivolous as lazy girl job or whatever the hashtag is. Tag is. <laughs> I think these people are devoid of passion and there's no longer public schools or any school of any sort that is actively working to encourage kids to find what they're passionate about. Instead, they're just telling kids what to think, not how to think. And when you're just told what to think, you never really spend the time thinking about what makes you happy, what makes you passionate, and what makes you tick as an individual. And so these girls have no passions. Therefore, maybe they do work a crappy nine to five, but they would want to do something passionate, uh, you know, on other time, I know so many people that come to me and say, I'd love to do what you do. I just do it on, you know, part time right now, but I need to move out of it. And, you know, you slowly work your way into the field that you want to be in. But the problem is they don't know what field they want to be in. Yeah. They don't feel anything that any passion in their life right now. And ultimately in traditional society, we would say, oh, you don't feel passionate about anything like, you know we would encourage you to have kids because it's inevitable that you're going to feel passionate about your children. But that has been lost by, as Kay aptly put it, 
Gloria Steinem, the domestic terrorist. So I think that's been completely ruined via public education and via the feminist movement. And it's left girls to what? Do lazy girl jobs and post things on Pinterest. I mean, I'm on TikTok. I know what these lazy girl jobs are. Are they all they all they are being pasting outfits from Lululemon onto Pinterest and then getting you get dimes for every click that somebody oh. puts on it. But if you but if you like on that Lululemon hooding, you're giving a dime to some lazy girl in New York City. Oh my that's god. Not so job. That's not a job. Why are they saying right. like lazy girl jobs when that's not a job? Yeah, they're not jobs. And AI guys. is gonna These do are... that anyway in sure. like a couple of years and all yeah. the money's gonna go back to the same company. Oh my god, I can't. I'm scared. It's it's I know very... but they should be they should be utilizing this hustle, right? They could utilize these kind right. of things to make pa- 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 income that they can then spend doing things that they're passionate about, but they can't even get there because they have no idea what they want because they never get to think for themselves. It's very depressing. I'll tell you, if I ever found out that my daughter was doing a lazy girl job, um, <laughs> she'd have a talking to for me, amongst other things we have discussed during the entire show. Uh, well, Kay and Chrissy, thank you ladies so much for joining us. You Thank are you. not hashtag lazy girl jobs. I'll say that right now. <laughs> just blanket it out there because it's so true. You are both incredible. Thank you for joining us here on The Right View, Ladies T. As always, to everybody at home, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And we will see you back here next time for more. So I'm like a lot of people. I love to wear an Apple Watch, but I hate how it looks. And I scoured the internet to search for the best looking Apple Watch cases I could find, and I found it. Goldandcherry.com. They have absolutely beautiful watches, as you can see here. Everything is waterproof. Everything looks good with different outfits. You can get sporty, you can get fancy but they are great quality, uh, made out of Delaware in the United States of America. And they have been kind enough to give me a promo code that I can share with you if you wanna get your hands on one of these as well. It's Lara T, L-A-R-A-T is the promo code to get yourself a discount at goldandcherry.com. And not only do they make Apple Watch cases, they also make great products for iPads and iPhones, keyboards, your desktop, everything you could possibly need, goldandcherry.com. Use promo code LARAT so you can get yourself one of these today too. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always gonna shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested, my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said, this is the pillow that I want to sleep with. And I gotta tell you, she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow. So it's a big hit around our house. My dogs also uh, happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds. So all around the Trump household, we're big fans. If you go to mypillow.com today, and use promo code TRUMP, again, promo code TRUMP, you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. 
That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. Uh, a lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going.